Hi, and welcome to Trex Academy, where you can learn everything you need to know about building your deck project. I'm Devin, and I'm here with Lindsay. And in this video, we're gonna be covering some things you need to consider when you're planning for, digging, and finally pouring your concrete footings. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna be doing, we need to check the required footing dimensions in our municipality. So footing depth is based primarily on the frost line in your area. So frost lines can vary greatly from very shallow in some more mild climates to very deep in colder climates. The second thing that we need to consider is gonna be footing type. So the two most common footing types that you're gonna see out there are gonna be a concrete pier or the kind that we're gonna be using on this project and that's gonna be a concrete footing with a post. Okay. I think it's also important to note that you're gonna see all kinds of different footing types out there but you always need to check with your local municipality to make sure that that type is actually approved. Yeah, you don't want to have to do that twice. No way, we're only doing this once. Okay, so now that we've determined the dimensions for our footings, the next thing we need to consider is what we're going to be using to dig our post holes. Okay, so the most common option that we have right here. Shovel. Right, we've got our shovel, post hole digger, and our digging bar. So we're going to be using these to dig out our first hole. After we do that, we're going to be talking about another option just going to be using a power auger. So let's go ahead and dig out this first hole. Wow, that soil is brutal. I know, man. It's so dry. It's a ton of rocks. Yeah, a lot of rocks. So obviously this is the disadvantage yeah. of using hand tools. It's going to take a lot longer, but it's the cheapest way to do it. True. Good workout. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Oh yeah, here we go. Nice. Just like uh, playing in the sandbox, right? Exactly. <laughs> nice. Here we go. So we've got our first hole dug. All right. It's a good time, right? Great time. We only have what, 21, 21 more to go? Left. All right, well, we better cool. get to it. Power augers are available wherever construction tools or equipment are rented. Depending upon your soil type and the number of holes you need to dig, a power auger may be a good option for you. So now we've got all of our post holes dug. The next step is gonna to be to have our inspector come out and he'll be here soon. But before that happens, I usually like to go and do a self audit just to make the whole process a little bit more smooth. Sounds like a great idea. I'd hate for the inspector to come out just to fail. Exactly, and then we'd have to fix all those problems, hopefully right then, but it might be a situation where he has to come back another day. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get started okay. by looking for the dimensions of our post holes. We already know we're going down 24 inches, mm -hmm. easy enough. Then we have the diameter of our hole, which is going to be 12 inches, all the way to the bottom, so not just at the top edge. Okay. It needs to be cylindrical, not in a cone, because that would be one thing we'd have to fix, and again, have to come back another day. Gotcha. So the other thing we're checking for, they need to be clear of debris, which could be a lot of loose dirt. Could be sticks or roots. We really need to make sure we get that out of there, because if we pour concrete right on top, that could actually end up rotting or decaying and leave a void in the concrete. Gotcha, we definitely don't want that. Nope. So question then, what about these tiny little roots that we're seeing right, sticking yeah. out here? Nope, those are no problem because these are all up top. Okay. Again, we just need to make sure that the bottom is gonna be clear because that's where we're gonna pour our concrete footing. Okay, that makes okay? sense. So let's go ahead and check all these holes and this, the inspector should be here any minute. Sounds good. Okay, I'm gonna start by measuring our depth we talked about. How's that look? Got, yeah, that that's looks great. great, yeah. Perfect. Now we'll check our diameter. Oh yeah, so well we're well, over right, we're over 12, which is good. Mm -hmm. Minimum 12 inches. And then to check the bottom, just bend the tape down in there. How's that? Yep, looks like we're 12 all the way to the bottom. All right, so obviously we can just look at it and see that we have no debris, yep. no big roots or sticks. So this one's good. Great. Let's go ahead and check the rest. Sounds good. Hey, looks like our inspector is here. Juan, how are you? Devin, good to see you again. Absolutely. So I've got Lindsay with me here today. Okay. She's helping me build this deck project. Been doing a great job. Okay, great. Hi, Juan. Lindsay, nice to Juan, meet very you. nice to meet you. Looks like you have a great site going here. Yeah, I think we've got everything ready for you. Okay, yeah, can yeah. I see your plans? Yeah. We're gonna check out the uh, post holes today. And so let's see, just a quick perusal of your plan. Looks like we have 22 holes on here. So we're gonna do a quick visual inspection okay. together. Okay, so let's see, okay. So Devin, I'm seeing just 21 holes. Can we, can you explain that? Right, yeah, so actually if you look right here on the plan, we had two post holes that were so close together that we actually made one larger hole, but the, the width of that larger hole is actually larger than two post holes. Okay, great. 
Great explanation. That'll work for me. All right, good. So I'm also going to go ahead and measure some of the holes. Okay. And what we're looking for here is that it meets your plan of 24 by 12, and also that you just maintain a good cylinder from top to bottom. Right. If you don't mind yeah. uh, holding that for me, I'm going to take a quick look here. And Devin, I see you're above 24 inches. Right. You know I like to go above and beyond. Yep. You see your work. And again, we're not looking for, it just has to meet your minimum. Okay. And again, on the width, you're above that 12 inches. Overachiever over That's right. here. Yep. So everything looks great there. So Juan, this is dry all the way down to the bottom. What if there was standing water in it? Great question. So standing water would definitely be an issue that could affect the integrity of the deck. So the water would definitely have to come out okay. uh, to meet inspection. And if we saw the whole fill back up with water, then we might have to uh, try and find the source of that. Okay. But the water would definitely have to be cleared out. But okay. luckily today, we're seeing no, no such issue. Great. Well, if we did see an issue of some sort, would you have to come back out and reinspect it? Yes, it is possible that I would have to come back and inspect it. If uh, there's something that we couldn't remediate right away on site, okay. then it is possible that I would have to come back. All right. Uh, let's say you do have to come back. Does okay. that, is that extra? Does that cost more? There's How no extra cost for that. Okay. No. Well, how many, again, hoping you don't have to come back to reinspect anything, uh -huh. how many total inspections do we need for this project? Okay, so we're gonna go through three inspections before we can sign off on the deck. Okay. The first one's the footing, which we're gonna right. not, Doing that hopefully today. knock yeah. out today. Yeah. The second one will be the framing. Okay. And that's to make sure the integrity of the deck is sound before you can put on the uh, deck boards and the railing itself. And then once that passes, you can, I'll have to come back out for a, a third inspection. Okay. And Final are you going inspection. to be the yep. one coming out for all three? Uh, not necessarily. It could be myself or a colleague of mine. Okay. And I know I'm asking a ton of questions here. No, please. I've got one more for you, uh -huh. for now anyway. What if, well, uh, okay, so I'm a DIYer myself. Okay. Devin's been kind enough to let me kind of tag You're along on this job. project. Sure. Thank you. How many homeowners or DIYers do you see passing this type of inspection? Okay. Um, so I've been to hundreds of job sites, many of yours, Devin. Yeah. What I find is that do-it-yourselfers like yourself, actually they take that extra step to meet those requirements. Mm -hmm. it, of course, it's the home that they're going to live in. Their family's going to enjoy that deck. So I think they take that extra step, don't cut any corners. And I would say eight out of ten homeowners pass wow. on their first inspection. That's great. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. So let's why don't we... Uh, go ahead and check another okay. hole while we're good. Here. Okay. Good. And then again, just doing a quick measurement. Make sure that you're having, uh, maintaining a good cylinder. Okay. Again, a little above the 24. Again, that's fine. And what I'm seeing here, again, fine on the width. While I was checking it though, I would, I do see a little bit of the breeze here. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Looks like we missed one, Lindsay. All right. Okay. So again, this is an example of something that we can take care of on site while we're here. So right. Devin, if you could work on that. Absolutely. Thank you. From me. Just clear this out really quickly. All right, how's that look? That looks fine. So again, we were able to address it while I was on site. So no need for me to have to come back. Awesome. Okay, why don't we go ahead and check another one while All we're right. here. All right. Let's do it. All right, Lindsay, Devin. Um, so we went through the whole site. We checked off everything. All the holes are within uh, your plan. And all we found was just a little bit of debris in that one. Yeah, that was an easy fix. It was. So we were able to fix it on site and move on. So I'm gonna, so you've passed this portion of the inspection. So the next step like is, here. yeah, absolutely. So the next step is you're going to be pouring the concrete. Yep. Um, please feel free to reach out to me. Just we're a resource here to help you. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. All right. So I'm going to leave this inspection at the front door. Okay. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was good to see you again. Good to see really you. Nice we'll see you again yeah. down the road. All right. Take care. Have a good trip home. We're back to work and me and you are going to start pouring our first concrete footers. Let's do it. All right, so now we're ready to mix up the concrete for our first concrete footing. But before we do that, we generally like to give you a couple different options, especially for DIYers, just to make things a little easier. So this is our first option, which I think is great for DIYers. And actually, I use it a lot if I have a smaller project. Okay. So all we have is our, our wheelbarrow, and then we have our concrete. We'll be pouring it out into here and putting the right amount of water 
Now we can mix it up here and we essentially have a mobile mixing station. Where we'll be able to mix it here and take it to wherever we're gonna be pouring our concrete footing. That sounds super easy. Yeah, makes sense, right? Yeah. I use this a lot. But for a bigger project like the one we have here, I've rented a concrete mixer, a much larger one in fact, so it's gonna make our job a little bit easier. Got it. All right, so with that out of the way, I think it's time to start mixing up some concrete. Ooh, quick question. Yeah. For the next deck that I work on, when I okay. go to purchase concrete, what am I looking for? Is there something specific? Is the cheapest okay? Does the price right. even matter? No, it's not about the price at all. What we're actually looking for with a project like this, we need a minimum of 3,000 PSI compression strength. Okay. Okay. Second question, what is PSI? What does that stand right. for? So PSI is pounds per square inch. And again, it's a measurement of the compression strength okay. of our concrete. Okay. So in this case, we have 4,000 PSI, which again is above that minimum that I said, because like I said before, we like to go a little bit above and beyond. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I see the 4,000 PSI here, yep. but it says it doesn't reach that strength in, until 28 right. days. Do we right. have to let this set for 28 days? No, no, no. So that 28 days is the initial cure. Well, we're, what we're more concerned about is the initial set. Okay. So the initial set can take anywhere from a couple days to a week. It all depends though on where you're going to be. And actually it can take less than that because where we're at overnight, it should cure enough to get to that initial set. And then we can put our post in. Exactly, but that's all gonna depend if it's a lot more humid or if it gets really cold, all of these things will determine that initial set It could take longer. Okay. So when I said that 28 days, that's a, that initial cure. And then you'll have the final cure, which could take decades and really isn't important for the project we're doing. Good, okay. Yeah, I know. All right, so any other questions? I think I'm good. All right, well, let's get to work. So safety is a concern with concrete. So let's first make sure that we're ready for that. We've got our long sleeves. Yep. Make sure that we have gloves on, put our hearing protection in for the concrete mixer, get our safety glasses on. And finally, we will be wearing a mask for this. Okay, let's go ahead and pour our first concrete footing. As we're doing that though, remember the footing thickness needs to be six inches at the bottom of the hole. Got it. And a good way to measure that, we just have a piece of rebar here, some spray paint on it. We know that that mark is gonna be six inches to the bottom of that spray paint. Okay. So as long as we get to the bottom of that, we're fine. We can go above just a minimum six inch thickness. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right, let's go for it. All right. Get about three scoops and then we'll check it out, see where we're at. All right, let's take a first look. Okay, looks like we are real close. If you can get some on the right side of that. Sure. Okay. okay. All right, I think it looks good. All right. Okay, so what we're gonna do next, we're gonna dampen. Yeah, you're already ahead of me. You can use a <laughs> shovel. I've also got a piece of wood here. Let's try this. We're just tamping it down. Good. Making sure it's all even. So as we set that six by six post in, we don't have anything jutting up so it doesn't sit flush. All right, it looks like a pretty good place to start. Yep. So now let's start working with our second option, which is gonna be this gas powered concrete mixer. So what we're gonna do, you already put the water in there for us. Mm -hmm. Now we'll be adding two bags of concrete. We'll mix that up, trying to find the same consistency as the footing that we've already poured. After we get that, we'll put two more bags of concrete, do the same thing, adding water as needed to get that same consistency. So I have another question for okay. you. I noticed that these are 80 pound bags. Yeah. Is that the smallest that you can get? Oh, no, you can actually get smaller bags. You can find 60. In fact, they're probably right next to these 80 pound bags in whatever store you found these. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you ready to go? Yeah. Let's go ahead and put on our mask. It's going to be a lot of dust again. Okay. All good? Ready when you are. Let's do it.
out in the Okay, let's pour our next footing. It'll be about three scoops, should be good. All right. Two. All right, you wanna check that out real quick? Yeah, yeah. actually that's just a little just over. Just over, should perfect. Should be good. Okay. I'm gonna tamp that down just a little bit. Okay, looks good. Yep. All right, so if we're gonna go ahead and pour the rest of our footings, and in our next video, we're gonna be setting our post and installing our beams. So if you'd like to see that video and a whole lot more covering the entire deck building process, you can go to trex.com forward slash academy. And thanks for watching.